Red. It's awesome. Flash. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to the Discord stage. Uh, this is Reddit Talks Clash. Uh, surprise, yeah, we do podcast. Joining us today, team manager Darian. Uh, how's it? How's it going, sir? Pretty good. Um, we just dropped our latest and last sneak peek today, so I'm really excited for the update. Well, what's it been like in the office leading up to to an update? This one's a little bit special for us because we know that, you know, builder base, it, it, it's, it's one of those things that either you love it or hate it. And the way development was going on, it was pretty much a dead end. So we wanted to take a risk and do something really big with it. And I think we've accomplished that. So yeah, there's a lot of excitement, a little bit of nervousness and it's why we've been sharing the update details for almost half a year now is that we wanted to set up the right expectations of what we were working on. So yeah, a lot of excitement. Yeah. So in terms of setting up uh, the expectations, I mean, the communication this year on Builder Base has just been great, right? We've been getting these development peaks before the sneak peaks even began. And uh, it's been awesome just having this transparency. So um, why why have you made this change for Builder Base? And is this going to be the new the new norm for future updates? That's actually that second part's a really good question. I'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, when we released Builder Base in 2017, there was almost no sneak peeks around it other than just the mysterious, you know, where does this boat take us video? And when the update dropped, because by that point, people had built up what their expectations of what kind of update was coming, that I kind of wanted to do the exact opposite with our communication this time, where we really set everybody up with the proper expectations early on so that it wasn't a a weird surprise of people going i was expecting this i thought it was going to be that mm -hmm. um on top of that and true for any game development like it's it's really hard to see past you know i'm i'm the public face of the game and like every other community manager and so there it's hard to picture that there's a whole team of artists programmers engineers all working behind the scenes to make this happen and so part of this was to kind of like highlight what they've been working on. In fact, the, our next dev video that it's not coming out tomorrow. It's actually going to come out a little bit later. And it's actually, we, we've got a round table discussion with nine of the clash team members from artists, animators, engineers, programmers, designers, all talking about what went into designing the new builder base. So I wanted to see this opportunity, this entire dev update cycle to really showcase and let everybody tell their stories. Awesome, yeah. So, in terms of um, the fu uh, future updates, do you think do you think you'll be continuing with this kind of transparency, or is this kind of a one-off? As Builder Base is obviously being quite quite love it, hate it, like you said earlier. I'm a fan of transparency, um, and for those of you who know me, I my tone of voice on Twitter and on Reddit that I do a little, I do get a little spicy sometimes, but. I will never BS the community. I will always try to be as transparent and open as possible. I may play word games with little riddles here and there, but when it comes to delivering information, I prefer blunt transparency over everything. And when I first joined the team, there was a lot of reluctance to do that. But now I think the team is in a really good place where they understand that they want to show that there's a human side behind the Clash team, that it's not just this monolithic supercell entity controlling everything. Like the Clash team is responsible for its own collective destiny and all game decisions come from the Clash team and the Clash team only. And I think by embracing that aspect of it going forward, I would love to see us do more transparent things about like when we start working on, you know, hypothetically Town Hall 16, like, Show some concept art, show some early design ideas, because these are the things that the community never, ever sees. And I feel like it's it's a waste of all this work if the community doesn't get to see what kind of effort went into the updates. Yeah, I remember um, for Tunnel 14, there was actually a little bit of concept art released of the hero pets, and I thought that was really cool. Um, but so, yeah, let's let's dive into what this update is about. The main thing, the biggest thing that's happening in Builder Base is it's being split into two stages. Um, yep. The second one being unlocked at Builder Hall 6. Now, can you give some insight about how this idea came to be to, to turn Builder Base into stages? Um, were there any other alternatives to, to going about the, the Builder Base revamp? Um, how did everything transpire? 
That's actually a really good question, and I have an answer already ready for that. <laughs> um, oh, perfect. <laughs> so when we released Builder Hall 9, you know, a thousand years ago, one of the original ideas behind it was that we were going to just end Builder Base there and sunset it. So basically meaning like once you got your Builder Hall 9, you unlocked Otto. So I've got dogs howling in the background for some reason. <laughs> um, and then once you finished it, there was never going to be a reason to go back. And oh wow, the other alternative ideas were like a, a mega crab type event. Like if anybody's ever played Builder Base, you'll know what the mega crab is. It's a seasonal event where a giant robotic crab comes out of the ocean in Boom Beach, and you you basically conquer one level at a time, and each level gets uh, proceedingly more difficult. And you want to go see how far you can go whether it's, you know, 10 levels, 30 levels deep, whatever. We thought about doing a similar idea like that for Builder Base, where it's just a, a nonstop treadmill of like just randomly generated levels that get more and more difficult. We may mm -hmm. still revisit that idea for another feature later on. That's not a promise. It's just that we, we don't want to scrap that idea. We really like it. Um, yes, I said crab. Yes, evolution all leads to carcinization or things evolve into crabs. Um, but we haven't touched Builder Base in, you know, a billion years. So yeah. after we released Clan Capital and Town Hall 15, we had a long discussion on the team on what should we do with Builder Base. And we wanted Builder Base, or we wanted Clash to have three columns right now, or three pillars of development mm. philosophy. Home Village, Clan Capital, and then we have the Builder Base. And so now all of these will be an ongoing development cycle where one update will be about builder base. Next one will be about possibly clan capital. The next one will be home village. And so it'll kind of go in a rotation throughout the years. So we have kind of a production roadmap, but in order to get there, we needed to figure out what we wanted to do with builder base. Last August, we literally sat down and asked ourselves, what did we like about builder base? And what did we not like? Everybody universally agreed that, you know, the three loot limit per day is something we didn't like. Every base, I think it's from like Builder Hall 7, 8, and 9, basically were all these death balls of all the defenses concentrated in the middle, which led to a lot of just spam attacks being one of the only ways to get one or two stars. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to see how can we fix this? And we asked ourselves, what did we like? And we liked the tactical flexibility of builder halls one through five where everything was still kind of tactical you can use a variety of different armies different strategies and so we thought how do we bring back that level of uh strategy and flexibility and, and kind of fun so one early idea with builder base was before we got to the multi-stage was that let's reduce the number of defenses you can put down so if you had, let's say, 50 defenses, you had to choose 30 of them you want to be in the base. But then that kind of, like, it, it resulted in kind of the same problem where everybody would pretty much just cookie cutter the same bases. Again, you'd still have death ball. Mm -hmm. So one of our designers by the name of Alex, he came up with the idea of splitting it into multiple stages. Like, let's do half of the base here and half of the base there. Um. And it was kind of like this very Lord of the Rings, Mines of Moria type of feel where you go deeper <laughs> into the mines. And oh, yeah. one hypothetical idea is like, as we add more Builder Hall levels, we'll add more stages later on. So oh, yeah. I was actually uh, <laughs> going to ask about a potential third stage coming because I know we have bronze and silver stars. So I'm assuming yep. we'll probably get a gold star in the future. Yep. Gold, platinum, diamond, whatever, rainbow. Um <laughs> The new builder base <laughs> opens it up for a lot of developmental potential. But ultimately, as soon as the split stage idea came up, everybody kind of went, oh, hey, that makes sense. And we play tested it early on, like around October or so. And we had, or no, maybe November. And we had a lot of fun with it. And then it just, development kind of just steamrolled from there. So um, with the with the three pillars of clash, you mentioned that uh, just a few minutes ago. Are we yep. gonna uh, expect the rotation of villages? So are we gonna are we gonna expect 
uh, this constant cycle to continue? And does the team essentially view the three villages now as equal? Because I think it would be fair to say that home village was obviously seen as the dominant one before, but now are they, you, they're all kind of being seen in the same light? Good question. A lot of good questions here tonight. Um, we don't see them equal in that each one serves a very different function. For example, the home village is where the, you know, that's that's the the meat and bones of the, or meat and potatoes of the game. Um, that's where, you know, you build your big personal village, you add a lot of personal touches to it. It's where you, it's basically how you interact with the rest of the game. The clan capital serves a different function where it's the entire clan working together. And we do have some ideas how we want to improve clan capital. Builder base was always meant to be a much more smaller personal journey so for example clan capital you're basically uncovering the ruins of a lost empire and you're kind of rebuilding that lost empire back up where builder base was more of you exploring new undiscovered lands um so each of them serves a different function builder base was always meant to be just kind of like your individual journey into something much smaller um i dare say i don't want to i don't want this word to be taken out of context it's meant to feel more casual in that it's not as intense as the competitiveness of home village or clan capital builder base is meant to be go at your own pace um but with these three columns or pillars now in place for example when we do town halls everybody knows that we're on a roughly 18 month cycle but now we're still sticking to those 18 months, but every nine months will be kind of like a refresh. So for example, with Town Hall 15, with the mid point refresh of Town Hall 15, where let's say call it 15.5, that's when you'll see all the next levels for all the buildings that haven't gotten levels yet. Then the next nine months after that, that's when you'll see Town Hall 16. Nine months after that, that's when you'll see the Town Hall 16.5. So we and so everything will be kind of on a rotational basis. So every quarter update will have this. Since this is gonna be the first update of the year, it's gonna be the builder base one. The next one will probably town hall refresh. Next one will be clan capital, then builder base, then town hall, then clan capital. So it'll kind of go in a rotation like that to kind of keep things ongoing. Right, and you just mentioned uh, the 18th month cycle for town halls. Is that something you might look to do for builder halls? Maybe not 18 months, but in some sort of similar fashion? So we know that people have been sitting at Builder Hall 9 for years and maxed out. So when Builder Hall 10 is released, we know that people have been sitting on max content for so long that they're going to zoom through the Builder Hall 10 content. So we may have to release some new Builder Hall content sooner than what we have planned. So there may be a Builder Hall 11 planned in the near future. We don't have anything set in stone just yet. Um, but bar like barring that, yeah, everything will be on kind of like an 18th month rotation. It's very clear that a lot of work went, uh, went into this whole revamp. This update is coming, I think, a little later than what most of us were anticipating. Is it just Same. Uh, in, in extra <laughs> Uh, is a big extra challenge or were there significant delays or how'd that all shake out? Yes, to all the above. So if you remember, was it last year when we released the Clan Capital? Clan Capital had been in rough development for, God, almost one or two years. Like we, we really sat on it for a long time and it wasn't until the last half year that we really started putting all the pieces in place. And we had to, originally we were even though it came out in May of 2022, we had originally planned on releasing it of December, 2021. Uh, and it caused pretty much a half a year delay because of how much we had to build from the ground up for that feature. Builder base was kind of the same um, because we got rid of the head to head, changing a lot of the logic for the matchmaking to work on top of that, being able to attack someone while they're still online without losing loot, and still have a an equitable equitable trophy uh, ladder system. It it wasn't like we could just copy paste the code from the home village and add it to builder base. No, we had to rebuild a lot of it from scratch. And a lot of the behind the logic um, 
behind the scenes logic is what caused a lot of the delays. When did like the actual hard work begin on builder base? How long ago? Let's see. Everything was pretty much on a design board, probably until maybe October is when we started really, really putting in the hard work. Um, a couple of our designers put together uh, uh, an internal build where it was a very, very rough prototype of just how the multi-stage battle would work. And once we realized that wor that, that feature worked, over the winter break, two of the designers pretty much stayed in Helsinki all through Christmas. And when we got back from winter break, they had set up a bunch of the new troop abilities. And that was kind of like one of the final pieces that fell into place. Like, okay, this is working. Um, we don't work like other game studios. For example, if you work at a AAA PC game studio, you come up with the design doc years in advance. And that design doc rarely ever changes. And so you basically build the game around that design doc. We don't work like that. We work very iteratively in that we have an idea and we just kind of build it based on that idea. Um, so builder base was literally an amalgamation of like four or five different game ideas that we discussed over the years. And we just kind of like, okay, let's take that part from that one. Let's take a part from this one and everything kind of fell into place nicely. Do, do you guys have like a, a super long list of everything you, of a bunch of different features you want to bring and stuff like that? Oh God. Yeah. Um, the oh. hardest part is knowing when to cut ideas and this is, Going back to the transparency, this is one of the things that's very difficult about being transparent about game development. It's really difficult to share a feature that we're working on. And if let's say the, the community is in love with this idea, but if we can't get it to work and we have to cut it, the disappointment from the community, they're like, we want that feature back. Why aren't you working on this? Or you spent all those months working on this and it didn't make it into the game. What were you doing? Yeah. So it, it, it's a double-edged sword to be transparent about features, but we do have a list of ideas that we wanted to add to Builder Base, and just you know, for purposes of time and purpose of complexity, like we just didn't have time to get it in. But this new Builder Base is the first stage of its kind of re-evolution. So we're saving a lot of the ideas for later updates. That was actually going to be my next question because I saw you mentioned on Reddit um, because a huge question right now is where is the tie-in to home build? So a lot of people are asking, um, what's the reason to play builder base? And I saw you answered that, um, that, that that's going to come at a, at a later update. So I was just about to ask that. Early in the builder base development, we were thinking about how do we add more tie-ins to other parts of the game? And the problem we had at the time is that we didn't even know what the new builder base was going to be like at that point. So we didn't want to start building out features and tie-ins to the other parts of the village, uh, other parts of the game, without knowing how builder base was going to end up. So we end up deciding for now, let's set aside any tie-ins. Let's just get builder base out and working and see how the community reacts to it. And then we can start evolving builder base from there. So whether it's, um, some ideas that have been tossed out, like, you know, an individual clan war type setting where, you know, where there's builder based tournaments, kind of like builder based leagues or like clan war type of thing, or having more tie in to the clan capital. These are all ideas that we'd like to do at some point, but right now we just wanted to get the new foundations of builder base out first before we started tackling those things. Yeah, awesome. So Builder Base is, I think, shaping up to be uh, a really exciting update. Uh, I think we're for our next question, so we're kind of going to move away to some different stuff. But is there anything else you kind of want to add on Builder Base? We might come back to it at the end when we do a bit of community questions. But uh, yeah, yeah, is there anything else you want to add? Um, let's let's move on, and then like I'll, I'll I'd rather wait for the community questions about it. Yeah, cool. So kind of taking a big leap to a different place, esports. So last this year and last, uh, half the golden tickets of Worlds were given out by third party organizations, right? Which is a complete break to what you've done in the years past, obviously doing exclusively uh, Supercell in-game run tournaments. 
So, um, in general, how happy are you with how these are run, and what kind of support and direction does Supercell give to those third parties? Ooh, interesting. So, even though in the past we've done golden tickets from our own live streams in partnership with other uh, groups, such as ESL and so forth, um, what we realize is that there's a lot of good community-run tournaments out there, and they deserved a lot of the recognition for contributing to the Clash esports scene. And we wanted to rely on their expertise on how they run their tournaments, like Alvaro's Queso Cup um, and so forth. Like, there's so much great esports experience out there, and we wanted to shine the light on these really great tournaments. So having them kind of share the load, one, it, it reduced a lot of our stress of having to host a tournament every month and we got to rely on this great community experience for players to rally around their favorite content creators tournaments so it, it's been a super beneficial and symbiotic relationship with these tournament holders and i think i don't we we kind of look at esports on a year-to-year -year basis so i don't know what 2024 is going to look like but we're really liking how this year is going with it yeah, I mean, I I really love following esports. I try to follow all the competitions as best I can, though I do sometimes wish there was like a better way maybe to view all the ongoing leagues, all the ongoing stats, tables. Uh, I know this is probably a thing that actually a third party would probably be quite good doing, but has Supercell ever considered a nice, concise way to view currently going tournaments? I know they do appear in the in-game tab, but in terms of viewing leaderboards, viewing um, brackets, etc., um, you might have heard me in the past say that each game team runs like its own individual company. So how the Brawl Stars team operates is very different from how Clash Royale operates versus how Clash of Clans operates. So each team has its own way of how they do esports. And we're trying to find some way to standardize our esports operations. So we are looking for an esports lead to join Supercell. And that includes someone who could be a really great project manager to help us prioritize what are the features we need to help improve and bring our own esports to the next level. So having some kind of administrator run like a community league board where everybody can go and check what their standing is throughout the year. Like these are all kinds of things that we would like to do as we build our esports team to be much more robust. So on Clash, we have maybe two or three people who run the esports globally. Um, and they are amazing project managers, but it, it is a lot of hard work to keep track of and run even just the world finals every year. So yeah, in that regard, like we, we are looking for more help to help build a much more robust esports scene at Supercell. So that's definitely something that's on the whiteboard for now. Is that going to be in a uh, position in Finland? It, ha it has to be because it's got to sit with the Clash team to, so that way they have ongoing knowing, knowledge of what's going into the game. Um, and because they are tied directly to the community team, they, they need to be in close proximity to us. You, you just mentioned that, you know, the, the different teams from different games are, are kind of doing their own thing. One of the, uh, one of the big arguments we see on Reddit is to, talking about balance changes. Um, so how much weight does the team really give to... Uh, to balancing things for an entertaining esport versus balancing things for a more casual player to have fun. That's a really hard line to walk. Um, because we get a lot of input from the best players in the world, like the most hardcore esports competitive players, we get a lot of feedback from them. However, we can't compare how they play to the vast majority of the population. And so a lot of our balancing changes are data-driven. For example, like we'll look at win rates of a particular troop. Like if we see one specific troop used in combination with a particular strategy, and that one strategy is what pretty much everybody needs to use in order to move ahead, that, that means there's something wrong with that strategy. And we need to either nerf something or buff something else. Sorry for the siren in the background. Um, something else needs to be changed. So we have a lot of data scientists who basically scour the in-game performance, um, hit rates, win rates, troop usage rates, pretty much on a regular basis. Yes, I'm getting arrested for the crime <laughs> of, I don't know, 
I, I couldn't think of something witty enough. Um, <laughs> my immigration is up to date, so it's definitely not border control coming to get me. But yeah, we 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 look at these data very very often to look at the hit rates, win rates, and we do consult a lot with the pro players and YouTubers on their thoughts on it. Yeah, so uh, in terms of balance changes, obviously you're saying about all these different people you get to give their inputs, but um, are there any certain balance changes actually you personally would quite like to see? They can be as wacky as you want or as serious as you want. Um, there's a reason why whenever the team is looking for ideas, they usually Stuart, the team lead, will say, I'm looking for ideas for this, except for Darian's. <laughs> um, and it's, it's kind of a running joke. Like, I'm I'm not a game designer, so like... I'm the last person to ask on balance stuff. But if you need a clever way of writing something, like I've written a lot of the in-game texts, I write a lot of the offer texts, um, the news texts. Like if you see something kind of very dad jokey in the game, chances are I probably wrote it. Did you write the um, Chief's Journey by any chance? Some of it. There's some, there's some good jokes in there. Um, so that was so Stuart, the team lead, he shares my love of really bad dad jokes. And so I'm so proud of him and the way he's kind of become the team dad. So he's adopted the requisite number of dad jokes. But as far as balance ideas, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't contribute to balance because I'm, I'm the worst person to ask on that. In regards to like quality of life, um, features, I know people are always posting on Reddit specific quality of life features they want to see come to the game. And those posts, we see them all the time. They're super repetitive. Everyone kind of feels the same <laughs> way when it comes to quality of life improvements. Um, so how do you guys go about seeing, like uh, so many people in the community want a quality of life change and, and um, considering bringing it and stuff like that? Another really good question. Jeez, you guys are on fire tonight. Um, so... <laughs> Let me address this. Um, Bill, our global chat is not coming back for everybody who's listening, so please don't ask. What? Um, it's been four years. <laughs> let it go. Just, just <laughs> let it go. Um, so quality of life improvements are kind of like we have a huge shopping list of things that we'd like to add. Um, we do scour Reddit for a lot of those ideas. Um, so thank you guys for being really awesome about making some of those ideas more prominent. Um, I know early on I used to joke saying that I hated Reddit, but you guys are pretty cool in my opinion now. Wow. Um, <laughs> well, ever since we shut down the forums, I've kind of had to find a place to post stuff. So you guys let me do that there. So I guess you guys aren't half bad. Um, <laughs> and it all comes down to, one, does a quality of life improvement, do we have time for it? basically like how complex it is to implement. Um, so after a major feature update, like redoing builder base or clan capital or a new town hall level, because those take up the vast majority of the developmental resources, quality of life improvement stuff usually comes at the tail end development. And that comes down to what do we have time to implement? And is it simple enough for us to do? But on the off time updates, for example, when it's just building levels or sometimes even just a quality of life improvement focus update, we'll spend much more time really looking through Reddit for finding those really good gems that'd be like, okay, yes, this would make it really awesome to have in the game. Um, some of them are just not feasible right now. For example, we know that there's issues with the recruitment system. We know, we've known for years. Um, especially with the removal of global chat. In hindsight, we probably should have added a recruitment system first before we got rid of global chat. Mm -hmm. But hindsight is 2020. Um, mm -hmm. But adding a new recruitment system would require us to really rebuild how the recruitment system works from the ground up. We're not happy with the one that's in there now. Um, so we, wanna, we would want to make something that's much more robust and functional. And that would require us to really sit down and plan it out. But when we're working on a major feature like Builder Base, all resources are developed or uh, focused on that particular update. Now, in the past, our main excuse was that we have small teams. And this is true mm -hmm. back in the day where we had maybe 11 to 15 people on the Clash team when I first started. We now have 40. 
Um, wow. With seven artists, several animators, multiple designers, working, we're looking for more programmers, we're looking for more engineers, more designers. And so what this is going to allow us to do is while one team of people work on the current update, for example, let's say Town Hall 16. And I'm again, I'm going to just hypothetical. It's not a say that that's what we're working out. Coming soon. Yes, next week. Um, <laughs> while one group is working on Town Hall 16, another group of artists are already working ahead on you know, new clan capital content or new builder based content and things like that. Wow. So we now have the ability and the resources where we can start splitting up people working on the live game versus new content. So it's, it's where the clash team is in a really good spot right now. Like we're really excited. A lot of wow. good energy. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's a good time to be on the clash team. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that the team's been growing. It was a, a year ago, right? There was a, a you know, or, or Ilka, I, f I forget who mentioned getting out of that small team mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you said the the team's up from like fifteen to turn around forty. So is it, are, are you oh. still going going to Go expand and grow, or are you happy with the size you're at now? So it's it's again, Supercell was always based on the culture of small, flexible, independent teams, and that was something that worked when Supercell first started. But we're not a tiny company anymore. And we can't think like a tiny company, but we can still keep that small team feel where the clash team is still small enough to maintain a lot of that flexibility. So for example, a game that I worked on many years ago, um, it was a triple A PC game. The development team alone was 250 people. That was just development. Wow. When I started at Supercell, we had 280 people. On this game, we also had over 1,000 QA testers, and that's not including marketing, PR, um, all the other stuff. That was That's for one game, and that's normal for AAA PC game development. And even though Supercell, we're not that tiny startup company anymore, we are growing significantly um, within the company, but the teams... Uh, what is AAA? AAA is like mainstream, like big games, like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Diablo, all those big box games from the big box franchises. That's all called AAA development. Um, so we can still keep that small team feel by st and still being a part of a larger company. So it, it's we're reinventing the Supercell culture, but still trying to keep that small team feel to it. Yeah, so... Um... That's really interesting hearing all about how Supercell is growing so so quickly. Uh, moving it, moving it away to some in-game stuff. So recently, uh, there have been some minor changes in the gold pass, things like scenery, skins at the beginning. You know these little little subtle changes. Uh, can we expect them to be permanent? And are there any other little changes coming to the gold pass in the near future? Ooh, good question. Um. We've been experimenting with the gold pass as you as you've seen recently on whether it was offering a scenery or offering a skin on the first level. Um, we don't want things to get stale with the gold pass. That when things become predictable and it's the same thing over and over and over again, from an excitement point of view, that feels like it can get a little vanilla and predictable. We are looking at how we can improve the value of it, whether it's offering more cosmetics, offering more speed ups. So we, we are, I don't want to give anything away just yet, but we are looking at ways that we can kind of spice it up a bit. I have to ask you, Darian, there has been a topic um, that I've seen discussions about all over the Discord and subreddit, and that's the discussion about a potential diamond pass. Is there anything you could say about that? Um, If I, I don't play Royale, so I have no idea how the Diamond Pass works. Um, is it just like a, another tier that you purchase? Yeah, so um, it's, it's uh, so their normal pass is five nine nine, and then they have a Diamond Pass that has a bunch of more stuff for, I believe it's eleven ninety nine uh, US dollars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's essentially a more expensive pass, but for more stuff. And so because Clash Royale got something like that, 
everyone in, in this community here is like, oh, are we going to get something like that? Um, and so that's why I thought I'd ask you about it. I don't think we do tears. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure that's the way the Clash team wants to run it. Um, the person who runs the gold pass is, is what we call our, our live ops manager. Um, he's the one who looks at the global performance of each gold pass every month and then year over year. So he's he's a bit of a, a number crunching guy. And I'll, I'll default to him on if anything needs to be changed or you know how do we want to add more value to it. Um, I don't think we do something like a, like a multi-tiered diamond and gold pass type of thing, but I do think that we are going to be making some changes to the gold pass. But what those are, I, I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> Any change of gold pass, I'm actually uh, really excited to hear about. Um, because as you said, it's become a little bit on the more predictable side, like same thing every month. So I, I'm really happy to hear that, that there might be some changes coming. We'll make it twelve ninety nine just to one up rail. Hey, there you go. I love it. <laughs> it is nice that the gold pass has been so such a consistent good value for the last three almost or over four years now that gold pass has been a thing. Yeah. So when I joined the clash team. Um, in 2007, actually tomorrow actually marks my official six year mark with the clash team. Oh, happy anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I call it my finniversary. Um, <laughs> there were a lot of sacred cows on the clash team that were kind of like off limits. And when Aino joined the team, he kind of looked at those sacred cows and like, why don't we kill these? Like, why, why aren't we doing these? Um, well, it was a very different team by that point. Like a lot of the original team members had left and a lot of new fresh blood joined. And so there's a lot of different ideas like, okay, what can we do to make Clash better? And one of those was like how we, we knew we wanted to implement Town Hall 12 at some point. And, but we realized that the grind to Town Hall 11 was so long at that point that we had to find ways to speed people up. And that's when we, that's when we introduced clan games, the magic items, and much later the gold pass, it was all to create a sense of value for progressing and updating your village. And I think the gold pass was very instrumental in being able to do that because the value you get for it, and I'm, I'm not saying this to evangelize or solicit the gold pass, you know, for the five bucks, whatever it costs in your country, you get a crap ton of stuff for it. But over time, when it's the same formula over and over again, even though you're still getting the same value, on an emotional level, it doesn't feel as valuable anymore. So that's, again, that's why we're kind of finding ways to really help reinvigorate that value for it. Yeah, I know that was uh, one of the big things causing the, the Clash Royale Reddit mods a, a big headache was the, the outrage over the perceived loss of value in, in their gold pass. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that doesn't happen to us because we just got over our big outrage uh, on Reddit uh, this, this last year with the account security update stuff. One thing I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you guys this, like any changes that we plan on making to the gold pass will be very transparent and direct about, you know, why we're at, why we're doing something, what we, what changes we want to make. If any changes come through, like you, you guys know that I'm, I'm pretty blunt and honest on Reddit. So I'll make sure like if anything comes through, I'll post it there. And if you guys have questions about it, I'm more than happy to answer any tough questions. So, um, but I, I guess, um, transitioning into um that account security stuff i know you did an interview uh with cat peter and fado on the pineapples and thorns podcast earlier this year and there yep. you had mentioned that reddit played a, a pretty big part in getting that account protection stuff added to the game uh, can you just let us know how how that all went down you just want me to stroke your guys's egos don't you a little bit a little bit uh, <laughs> reddit has been instrumental on buffing up, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the supercell id team is a completely separate team than what works on the clash game and because every like i said every team works independently um there can feel like a disconnect on what one team is working on versus what another team is working on and while the supercell id team was working on account security features 
it wasn't until the stop the fishing, whatever it was, hashtag on Reddit, that really gave me the impetus to really go and yell at the Supercell IT team saying, like, we need this now. And it was all the posts about accounts being fished or, and I know some of them were even people with multiple accounts posting different stories. In the end, that still helped. I'm not, I'm not advocating to do that. And it's, I'm not saying that's a way to get your message across, but seeing the different people posting about their accounts and like the, the lack of security and lack of confidence in being able to hold on to their account, it was the feeling of lack of confidence and protecting their account is what was the biggest driver behind it. Um, and cause when, if you're not comfortable playing your game and you're always worried that someone might steal it, that you no, know, that results in less people playing and nobody wants to see their years of work lost. So a few of us community managers, we went over to the Supercell ID team said, you guys need to read these threads, look at these threads, make this happen, make it happen now. So yeah, you guys were very much instrumental in making that happen very quickly. So thank you guys. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just hope we didn't make your your job a little a little too hard for you there. Um, and but overall, I know that's what my job is. I, I know Reddit's been just insanely happy with uh, with how the account protection feature has has rolled out and and everything it does. So just from all of us, uh, you know, thank you for helping advocate uh, for that for us with with that with the Clash team. Yeah. One of the big problems was that a very large percentage of accounts that were being stolen were from account sharing. And I can't go into, we don't share numbers publicly, but it was a very high percentage of people like my account was fish. It's because they, you know, either shared their account with someone else. A large number of them were like paying for like account leveling services or purchased accounts. And it, it, it made it really difficult to separate which ones were the legitimate account thefts because a lot, a lot, a large portion of them were people like falling for scams in game. Like, give me your email address and I'll add my Supercell ID account to your email. And what they would do is just steal their email address to use that to steal their Supercell ID account. So, and the social engineering of player support didn't help. In any security system, the human element will always be the weakest link. And that's what social engineers take advantage of. That's why it is social engineering. That's why they're good at it. Um, they know how to exploit that human link in any security system, whether it's Supercell ID accounts, bank accounts, credit cards. Why do you think people fall? Why do you think scamming is such a billion, multi-billion dollar industry around the world? Um, that's why there's all these scam call centers set up in various countries. It's because knowing that they can exploit the human element and steal what they want from a people. So having accounts stolen from Clash Clans was no different. They're taking advantage of the human element to exploit that weakness. We will never be able to fix that permanently. If we could fix that security, every game studio in the world would be paying us billions of dollars for that magic bullet that would fix it. There is no magic bullet, but what we can do is help make as many deterrents as possible. So adding the account security, um, really buffing up how people, socially engineers are player support agents with better policies. So all these things can be improved, but it will never be a magic cure for good common sense practices. Like right now, one of the big security issues that we find with players People, I get a lot of DMs on Reddit, on Twitter, saying my account was stolen. But it turns out it's because, and th these are people who's like, I even set up the account security and my account was still stolen. And it's because that person gave that account security code to someone else. And they gave them access to their email address. And that person then went and changed the security code so the person can't log, other person can't log in anymore. I would say a large, more than 75% of the account theft message that we get are from people if they have their account security system already set up so i'd say over 75 percent of the stolen accounts have come from people who have shared their code with someone else yeah i mean I, at the end of the day we're still all incredibly grateful like rick said for the work you and the whole team and you personally did to uh fix the whole well you know at least give a much better solution to the whole issue uh but for a slightly more like hard to question um what is your general day-to-day -day like in the office you know what is on your to-do list whenever you 
whenever you come in in the morning? Every day is pretty different. Like I'll log on to Slack to check any messages from content creators. But usually the next thing is I log on to Reddit to see what the hot topics are. So yeah, you guys are part of my daily routine, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> the vast majority of my day though is on calls with various outsourcing partners. So all the social media posts that have like, you know, cinematic videos, graphic like graphic images we don't do those in-house we outsource them to different agencies and so the vast majority of my day is just talking with those agencies doing iterative work like okay you know move the character here uh change the color to this it's, it's very very tedious graphic design work with the partners and i would say that's probably the vast majority of my day but as we get closer to the updates the com like we have, we have three community managers on clash so the three of us will sit down and said, okay, how do we want to set up, how do we want to set up the sneak peek schedule? What do we want to share first? What cinematics do we need? I'll go into the game and write the notes based on our design docs. Um, and then we just, that's when the momentum and this excitement really starts happening is that once we have that. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, I kind of just uh, reminded me of, um, during that Town Hall 15 update, before it, Stuart wore that shirt that had the uh, Town Hall 15 rele release date on it, I think. And was there anything that we may have missed concerning the Builder Base revamp, Builder Base 2.0? I know you guys have been super um, open about everything, but was there anything that wasn't caught? Oh, I don't know. Um, so Stuart did an interview on BBC a few months ago. And I think there was a okay. post-it note on his desk. Or may have, been, may have been when we did our AMA, when he took a picture of his desk. There was a post-it note that talked about multi-stage battles. And this was, you know, four or five, maybe six months ago, I think. So there's been little hints here and there that nobody's caught. But I'd have to go back and act. Because Stuart loves leaving those breadcrumbs. Yeah, the, the get to the chop of on that one Reddit post about the helicopter battle machine, that was a bit of a, I saw that, a tongue in cheek yeah. Easter egg. Um, it wasn't meant to be as obvious of an Easter egg, but it was a little nod knowing that the battle copter was coming. Um, but we've done little things like that here. And I'd have to ask Stuart because he, he loves doing those. Awesome. And like once the update's out, I'll ask Stuart like, if he remembers all things and I'll put together a list on Reddit, it's like, here are all awesome. the hints missed. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk. I'll yeah. ask him about it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and move on to questions that we received uh, from the community, from the chat. Okay. Uh, yeah, the first one uh, that we have is, um, will the trophies still reset at 5,000 uh, at Builder Base like they do now? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I know that question has been asked, and I had meant to ask the Clash team about it Um I'll ask tomorrow when everybody's in the office. But it's a really good question. I me I'd meant to find the answer to that. I completely forgot last week. So my, my bad. Um, but I'll find out for you guys. Awesome. Uh, well, another question. This is from uh, Sankit. Uh, can we know about any quality of life changes planned for future updates? I know we did already briefly cover this, but I guess in the more immediate future. Um, let me see what if we have anything coming in this update. Like We've been so focused on update itself. Um, give me a second to find my full patch notes. Um, I will not be sharing my screen. Um, I know we've got some game changes coming. Obstacles that you've used a shovel on can be stashed. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. There's like a few tiny ones like that. Um, a, a, a couple tiny AI changes. The full list of them will be on the official patch notes. Um, allow usage of the research potion while the lab is upgrading. Little tiny things like that. A lot of these were thrown together. Like I said, we only go for like the low hanging fruit. Oh, um, to answer the thing, the answer the thing about the stash thing, it, it's allows stashing of shovel obstacles also outside the layer editor or layout editor. Does that make more sense? Yes. 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 Okay. Definitely. I, I did see a lot of people requesting that uh, change on Reddit. I remember. So like right now, this this update's not going to be major quality of life improvement heavy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anything's slated for the next update, uh, just because the next one's coming so quickly after this one. Yeah, I was I, I was uh, going to ask about that. A lot of people are asking, um, because we usually get a summer update in June, 
Yep. And but since this one kind of got delayed more than um, anticipated, are we still gonna get that June update? We're aiming for it. Oh, that's that's awesome to hear. <laughs> so, um, once our artists had finished working on all the builder based content, the last part was getting all the logic and the matchmaking stuff on the server end. And that's where a lot of the legwork has been going on for the last couple of months. So while that happened, all the artists have been working on content for the next update. So we, we've been kind of splitting duties. So hopefully we'll be able to get that June update as quick as possible. All right, looking through our list of other questions. Um, uh, what's your personal trophy record? On the home village? Or wherever. Yeah. Oh, either. Yeah. Um, I think builder base, the highest I've ever gotten was like 5,800. Um, oh, wow. God, I, I love my super P.E.K.K.A. Slam, uh, spam. That's really yeah. impressive. Um, let me see. I'd have to log in. Let me log into the game really quick to see what my trophy level is. Um, I think the highest that I've ever gotten was, I think, Titan 3. Never ventured into Legends? No, never been to Legends. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm not nearly good enough. <laughs> I, I, I would have expected... Um you to be in legends but that's actually a, a bit of a surprise not gonna lie so we have on the i mean even just within supercell but even on the clash team we have a wide range of players for example one of our artists he likes playing clash as a farm sim he just likes making his village look pretty oh. <laughs> um, we have our game designer petri who is probably one of the most skilled players outside of the pro players same thing with the other community, uh, community manager monica she, she's the one who oversees a lot of the content creators and pro players. And so she'll hang with the best of them. Um, and so we do have people of like different play styles and play levels. And that's good because it means that we have perspective from every type of player. We're not all hardcore trophy climbers. Um, we're not all hardcore pro esports players. Like, so if something, if one designer has a perspective on, I want to do this, the rest of us can chime in saying, you know, like, for the rest of us, that may not be as fun. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, in terms of XP levels, uh, are there any plans in making them more functional, like giving them an actual purpose in the game? There will be, it would be, it's, it's one of those, it would be nice. Um, same thing with like the clan levels. These are yeah. things that are, they're on our whiteboard of, it would be nice to do, just not yet. We haven't even sat down and discussed what we'd like to add to them. So it's 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 one of those in the back of our heads that we we know yeah. we'll need to address it at some point, but we've been kicking that can down the road for a few years. Yeah, more of an aspirational thing, I guess. Yep. And then uh, we'll uh, go through one more question before we wrap it up. This is a question I've seen quite a few times um, because as versus battles and versus tro trophies are being uh, removed from builder base, um, and but builder base does have their own legendary trophies called prestige will those remain in the game since there will still be a, a trophy reset there won't be a trophy reset or i would talk about the monthly reset oh the monthly reset oh one i gotta find out if that's going to happen or not um and two i don't know what's going to happen with any legacy awards or any le legacy like achievements or anything like that i have no idea um oh, okay. I, again I'd, I'd have to find out on that yeah Rick or Spence, ping me on Slack. Oh, I actually just see right now. Um, it was answered. Was it? On Slack. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there will be a trophy reset at 5,000 trophies. There will. Okay, cool. Well, okay, perfect. Spence, have you got anything else to add? Nope, that, that's everything you got. No? All good. Well, I think that basically brings us to the end of all our questions. Darian, it's been... It's been really great to have you on for this hour. I think everyone can say we've learned a lot of cool things uh, about Supercell, about uh, future updates. It's been great. Uh, we'll publish this podcast on all the usual podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, basically everything for everyone to listen to again. So don't worry, you, you will not lose this. You can hear Darian's lovely voice for many, many more hours to come. Uh, but yeah, Darren, it's been great having you on. Is there any last words you'd like to give to the to the Reddit slash Discord community? Yeah, actually. Um, I hate you all. Um, <laughs> oh. I wish I never met <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you, you guys have been awesome. Thank you for keeping me honest and as transparent as possible 
on the subreddit. Um, I, I truly appreciate it. Um, you guys are genuinely awesome. Thank you for all the hard work and the passion that you put towards the game. Um, you guys make my job sometimes harder, but usually much easier. And I couldn't do my job without the dedication and the input that comes from you guys. So again, thank you for being amazing. Well, thank you for being incredible with us too. You know, thank I you, think yeah. the I think the engagements you give us is much, much better than I think most community support teams give for other games. So yeah, really heartfelt thank you for coming on to talk to us today, answering everyone's questions and just being around in general. Uh hopefully this maybe will happen sometime again in the in the distant future. But for now it's been great having you and thanks to everyone else for tuning in and listening. Goodbye.